Coming up on today's show, Harley-Davidson unveils the production Livewire electric motorcycle, how Elon Musk personally gets involved in the testing of autopilot, and just who is that mysterious fact checker on the Tesla Motors Club forum. These stories and more coming next. Hi there, folks. Welcome to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport. No, you've not lost a couple of days. I'm away this weekend being a giant doggo for a good cause, so I figured it made sense if I recorded this early and also released it early too. There's quite a lot of two-wheeled news in today's show, as it was the 2018 EICMA motorcycle show in Milan this week. And the first of these motorcycle stories comes courtesy of Harley-Davidson, which unveiled its production Livewire electric motorcycle there. It's quite the looker with style that's unmistakably Harley. I almost want to say there's an air of Electroglide in that light housing at the front. While no official specifications or prices have been listed yet, we can tell you that it comes with level 3 DC quick charging as standard, meaning you'll be able to recharge for the next leg of your ride in about as much time as it takes to grab a quick bite to eat. Personally, I can't wait to get a ride when it enters production next year. It's official. While the 2019 Jaguar I-Pace managed a European WLTP test cycle range of 292 miles, 470 kilometers per charge, just released US testing for the same has given it a paltry 234 miles per charge. That's 377 kilometers. Given the US EPA test is closest to real world, that's a big disappointment, especially if you consider that the I-PACE has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's far larger than the Chevy Bolt EVs or entry level Tesla Model X's packs, both of which can travel much further per charge. Lime, the Alphabet and Uber-backed scooter share service that's popular in many cities around the world, will soon be bringing its service to the city of Seattle. But unlike most places where it offers bicycle and electric kick scooter shares, it will bring Lime-branded electric cars along too. Reportedly, the two vehicles in consideration for the Seattle service alongside electric scooters are the Fiat 500e and Renault Twizy, a European two-seat city runabout. In Europe, the Twizy is allowed to travel at up to 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers or thereabouts. But thanks to US regulations, any Twizies used in the US would have to be restricted to 20 miles per hour, 30 kilometers per hour, as they were when San Francisco-based Scoot trialed them last year. As I detailed in our last show, Faraday Future is in a pretty dire way, having lost some of its top execs and furloughed some of its staff last week in a last-ditch effort to stay afloat. Well, now it appears that some Faraday Future employees have turned to crowdfunding to help staff, launching a GoFundMe page to raise $50,000 to help employees avoid financial trouble while Faraday Future scrabbles to find more capital. It's super sad that this is happening, and it's good to see that the GoFundMe exists, but I suspect those affected will be looking for new jobs too. Reducing the amount of cobalt in a lithium-ion battery is something that the electrochemical industry has been working hard on for years, not only because it helps lower the cost of battery packs, but also because it reduces the reliance on the cobalt supply chain, a metal that is mined in the politically unstable Democratic Republic of Congo, often by child miners. This week, Kenan Sahin, a well-known electrochemist whose previous battery innovations have become used around the world, unveiled Gemex, an invention that's already been gratined patents around the world, and he says could reduce cathode cobalt content to as little as 4% compared to the 20% that's average today. Sahin says he's already had one automaker agree to license his technology. For more than three years now, we've seen Tesla roll out increasingly advanced versions of its vehicle operating system, including in those over-the-air updates, more and more advanced variants of its autopilot semi-autonomous driver assistance package. Testing autopilot releases before they're unleashed on the public is, of course, a very important job. And this week, a report says that Elon Musk gets stuck in helping out with that testing, running the latest pre-release autopilot software on his own personal cars. Interestingly, too, the report suggests Musk has a special software hack enabled to make his car's autopilot behave a little more aggressively than it does in publicly released software. Knowing what I do of Musk, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Following the fatal collision earlier this year in Arizona, when one of its semi-autonomous prototype vehicles hit and killed a cyclist as she walked across the road at night, Uber has filed an application with the Pennsylvania DOT to resume its autonomous car testing in Pittsburgh. 
Under Pennsylvania state law, fully driverless autonomous vehicles are prohibited, meaning that Uber would need a safety driver behind the wheel. But apparently the city of Pittsburgh is going one step further. It wants to limit the speed that these autonomous vehicles can travel to 25 miles per hour for safety reasons. I'll keep you posted on the outcome. If you're outside of the US or Canada and patiently waiting for your Tesla Model 3, you'll be pleased to know two different things occurred this week that may mean your car isn't too far away. First, Tesla has registered a series of VIN numbers for European spec cars, meaning European testing will soon be underway. At the same time, Tesla has told its first Chinese Model 3 customers that they should expect deliveries of their cars to start in March next year. Sure, it's a pretty long way away, but it does give you something to look forward to. Sadly, if you're in a right-hand drive country, though, you're still last on the rollout list. Sad face. Fiat Chrysler has issued an official recall for all 10,021 2017 through 2018 Pacifica hybrid plug-in minivans to resolve an issue that could result in a stall or possibly vehicle fire. The issue traces to a problem with vehicle software that means that the gasoline engine may not start properly after the car has been driven in all-electric mode. This could result in either a stall or unburnt gasoline entering the exhaust catalyst, which FCA says could potentially ignite, which of course would lead to a fire. Owners will be contacted for remedial work to be carried out under warranty. And now it's time for short shorts. Daimler announced an expansion to its Accumotive battery production facility this week, doubling the number of staff working on its battery production lines from 500 to 1000. This is all so that it's ready to produce high volumes of batteries for the upcoming Mercedes-Benz EQC SUV, which is due next year. A medical clinic set up at Tesla's Fremont factory is under fire after allegations made by five former clinic staff. They say its practices are unsafe and unethical, that the clinic is refusing injured staff treatment or downplaying injuries to keep things non-recordable. Tesla denies the allegations. Tesla Model 3 deliveries in Canada, combined with other EV sales there, have pushed electric vehicle market share over 8% for the first time. Granted, that's nowhere near Norway's massive EV market share, but it's far better than the US's 2 or 3%. Kimco introduced a new electric motorcycle at EICMA 2018 this week in the form of the Supernex electric supersport motorcycle. It claims a 0-100 sprint time of 2.9 seconds and a top speed in excess of 250 km per hour thanks to its six-speed gearbox. Range and pricing hasn't yet been confirmed. Premium Danish bicycle brand Biomega has made its first four-way into four-wheel transport this week by unveiling its Sin electric car. Minimalist beyond anything I've seen before, it's been built to offer affordable and sustainable urban transportation. But I'm not sure its less is more aesthetic will catch on. Sticking with bikes, General Motors unveiled two electric bicycles this week and says it wants fans to name them. They're the first of a series of connected e-bikes that GM hopes to turn into a brand that will help it promote and offer multimodal transit in the future. Nikola Motors, the truck company wanting to go head-to-head -head against the Tesla Semi in the big rig marketplace, has just unveiled a new hydrogen fuel cell truck for use in Europe. Called the Tray, it's styled like a European truck, with the cab situated over the top of the powertrain. Yet another electric motorcycle launched this week in the form of the Super Soco TC Max, a lightweight, affordable, read 5,100 US dollars, electric motorcycle with a maximum speed of 62 miles per hour, that's 100 kph. It's aimed at commuters, but honestly, I'm not sure it's powerful enough to safely handle highway traffic. Following on from the success of Formula E, a new race series has been announced this week, but instead of it being for cars, it's going to be for airplanes instead. Enter the Air Race, a Red Bull-style air race series for electric planes that is promising to launch in 2020. Watch this space. Jaguar Land Rover announced an investment in motorcycle startup Arc this week, a company which also unveiled the Vector Superbike in Milan at ECIMA 2018. In addition to having some impressive specs, the Vector pairs with a helmet that has a head-up display and a motorcycle jacket with haptic feedback. At 117,000 US dollars though, it's not cheap. Talking of not cheap, Volkswagen's prestige Mark Bentley is supposedly considering its first electric model to be built before 2025. It would help the Mark meet emission standards and would most likely be built on the same platform used by the Porsche Taycan. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week.
Tesla may already have an order book full for the all-electric semi, but that doesn't scare Daimler's truck division, which confirmed this week that its own development on production electric trucks is progressing far more quickly than it had originally expected. Stating that the best battery solution will win in the electric truck segment, adding that it's all about energy consumption, Daimler's head of trucks for North America, Roger Nielsen, said that Daimler would have the highest number of electric vehicles in the commercial segment by 2020. It looks like the battle is on. The Boring Company is getting ready to host a special event on December 10th to showcase its first test tunnel built under Los Angeles. And this week, Elon Musk published a video of the tunnel in its entirety, saying he'd walked the entire length himself. The tunnel isn't particularly exciting per se, but Musk says he wants Tesla to bring some electric cars along to the launch party to add maximum enjoyment to the opening and the day-long Ride the Tunnel event the Boring Company intends to hold the next day. Tesla's power packs have proven really popular with homeowners around the world who want to store power generated from solar panels on their roofs or just want a way to store emergency backup power in the case of a blackout. Similarly, we've seen power banks gain popularity with power companies around the world looking to stabilize and green up their grid, such as the massive power bank installations that we've been seeing in Western Australia. Well, now there's a new trial taking place in Meadow Springs, Western Australia, where a single Tesla power bank has been set up in a small community operating as a grid tied storage device for all the homes it's connected to. Each home taking part in the trial will be able to store and use up to eight kilowatt hours of power in the power bank at a time. And finally, online, nobody knows that you're a dog, at least. That's according to the internet meme. And it turns out too that nobody knows if you're Elon Musk or not. You see, in the last few weeks over at the Tesla Motors Club forum, there's been an enigmatic and prolific poster by the name of Fact Checking, who's been replying to posts concerning everything from Elon Musk's thought processes to Tesla software and Tesla shorts. Tesla says it isn't Musk, but when Musk made the same joke on Twitter that Fact Checking had made earlier in the week, well, that got people wondering. Elon? Is that you, Elon? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe using the links below, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Oh, and if you can, please consider supporting us through Patreon. We really couldn't make any of these shows without all of the fantastic support that we get from our Patreon patrons, and it's never too late to become one for yourself. We'll be back to a normal schedule next week. And if there's been any new stories breaking at the end of this week that we've missed, I'll be sure to put them in next week's show. In the meantime, I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me. And as always, don't forget to be better, smarter and kinder. Keep evolving.